वेलकम टू साइबर कॉन सी एन बी सी टी वी एटीन स्पेशल ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑन द राइजिंग साइबर क्राइम केसेज इन इंडिया आई एम सांत्या एंड विथ मी इज अर्चना सोलंकी द इंडियन साइबर क्राइम कॉर्डिनेशन सेंटर हैज वॉन दैट इंडियंस कुड लूज ओवर वन पॉइंट टू लैख क्रोर रुपीज ओवर द नेक्स्ट ईयर टू साइबर फ्रॉड द होम मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एलिएटेड डिपार्टमेंट से इज द क्वांटम ऑफ लॉसेज को टैंट अमाउट टू जीरो पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट ऑफ जी डी पी Every day we hear more and more cases of tech savvy scammers leaning on India's digital boom to defraud unsuspecting victims. Uh, well, uh, you know the whole purpose of this series is not to create panic, but rather to sensitize our viewers about the steps they could take, how vigilant they could be as far as uh, saving their hard-earned money is concerned, their wealth. keeping it safe so today on the broadcast uh, we will put the spotlight on the abuse of artificial intelligence to clone someone's voice apart from using the technology to create personalized messages educational material etc now fraudsters also impersonate a person's voice and dupe their parents or relatives of their money now before we delve further santhya spoke to a cyber security expert to understand how ai voice cloning actually works take a look Have you ever heard of grandparents or parents scam? Has it ever happened to you or anyone you know where they received a call from an unknown number but heard what seemed like to be the voice of their child? So this is how the scam works. The voice claims to be stuck in a difficult situation and asks the victim to transfer money in a specific account. Believing that the call is from their son or daughter, victims often end up transferring money. So how do fraudsters manage to mimic the voice of family members of a victim it's called voice cloning today we are being joined by cyber expert ankur puranik who is going going to give us a demonstration on how voice cloning works for safety reasons we won't be able to give you a step by step explanation of the process however at the end of the demo we'll see just how easy it is to clone someone's voice thanks a lot for joining us ankur yeah. So how do we do this? What should I do? Yeah, I, first I'll require your audio sample of uh, 90 seconds. So I'll request you to record your sample, and okay. then we'll process the sample. Okay, and I can uh, record it on my. Uh, phone yeah, just on your phone. And I can say whatever I want to. Yeah, whatever you want. Just the 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Okay. Yes. So here I am. I'm going to record my uh, voice sample. Hello, this is Santhya. I work for CNBC TV 18. Uh, for the last few days, I'm working on the second edition of CyberCon, a special campaign uh, run by CNBC TV 18, where we are trying to do our part. Uh, right now, it's one twenty, one minute, twenty four seconds, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, or twenty nine, forty, and we are done. this voice sample now once you are done uh, uh, with the cloning part you can make uh, my voice that voice sample say whatever you wanted to say right mm -hmm. okay so there are some terms conditions that it asks you to accept okay. yeah okay. okay we'll name it so it asks you know what tone will you mm -hmm. talk in this so cloning can, now uh, yeah you can have adjust it according to accents yeah. and everything yes yes okay. absolutely so you know because if your uh, voice comes out like a us person mm -hmm. or like a us woman it's not going to sound original to your family member no, no of course yeah yeah so But it if has somebody a, wants to do that yeah, that is a possibility yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so, so now i've given a sample of my voice now ankur is typing the text in the software so after once the cloning process is over whatever this text reads it will be heard in my voice so here's the text it says hi i'm taking a flight now already the flight has already taken off i'm unable to call but please transfer 25000 rupees to this google pay number this is a specific number he has given uh, a sample number actually i'll call back once i land and i have to turn off my phone now so this is this particular voice thing is only for demo he has written that also to be to be safe yeah let's do so this then let's check now what we get to play it audio so it'll be about 90 95% match That and what, uh, what they do is they put a lot of background noise when they are playing this so uh -huh. you know your audio uh, when it is uh, heard in silence right. there is a uh, possibility that somebody can make out but when there is a lot of public talking in the yeah. background you know so we'll see what has come out and anyway if the voice claims to be stuck in a difficult situation yeah, it's believable it that there is a believable, disturbance yeah. there is some sort of disturbance right yeah. hi i'm taking a flight now already flight has taken off i am unable to call but please transfer rice 25000 to google pay number 
9999999. I'll call back once I land. I have to turn off my phone now. This is only for demo. You know, I can tell you because the the sound the the voice sounds exactly like uh my sound mm -hmm. and because when I spoke to like when I gave my voice sample I spoke as if I was shooting for a story so that's why the the tone I guess is like that yeah yeah so if somebody is uh if some if you get a voice sample or if fraudsters get a voice sample for yeah. normal conversation it's normal, like yeah normal so normal they normally pick up these uh, conversations from uh, videos that we put on uh, Facebook or mm -hmm. on Instagram so it's a very natural audio right now it was a little uh, polished audio so we started this process at 1:20 pm and we finished this process at 1:29 pm and that included me talking for one and a half minutes while i was giving my voice a uh, sample it included we talking to each other and also uncle trying to figure out a couple of things despite all this it only took 9 minutes, nine minutes. that is extremely dangerous and that's exactly how the fraudsters are scamming people senior citizens are more prone to this category of scam as well so if you uh, or your parents or your grandparents uh, ever get a call like this we should tell our grandparents and parents and we should be aware that we should not transfer any money to any unknown bank account Well, uh, Santhi, I'm going to be very, very careful if I ever receive a call like this from you or anyone. But this yeah. actually is a very scary piece of investigation. It is an eye opener. It's a big reality check. Yeah. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, could you help us understand uh, the key takeaways that you drew from this story? So, Archana, for example, somebody like me, I'm not a tech savvy person, right? Mm. So, first of all, I was amazed how easily it was done, right? Of course, Ankur is an expert, but what I figured that you don't really have to be A, you know a high level hacker a sophisticated hacker to do this it's that easy it's that quick it took less than 9 minutes and as i mentioned in those 9 minutes it's all it's all, it also included ankur doing a couple of things because there was some error so he was rebooting stuff mm -hmm. and all that so it actually takes 5 to 6 minutes that's all it takes another thing which really scared me that how easily these fraudsters can get access to your uh your voice samples for yes. example it's the instagram era it's the mm. uh, social media live era wherever we wherever we go whatever we do we you know upload those videos of ours right yeah. where we are talking where and as i mentioned when i was giving my voice sample i spoke as if i was in the studio or mm. shooting for a story of ptc so that's why the tone was very professional it was not a normal conversational tone hence the uh, yeah. the difference yeah. right and also another thing that when we heard this audio the reason it's still because it sounds at around 80% like my uh, like my yeah. uh, my voice right so the reason it sounds like that because there is no disturbance in, yes. the, in the background yes so for example if a fraudster wants to scam my parents mm. so what the person will do the person will add a lot of background noise horns or maybe mm. you know chit chit whatever a lot of uh, background noise so that it will sound more believable uh, my parents won't be able to understand that it does not really 100% sound like me uh, sounds like me so that is an uh, a dangerous thing which i figured and for people like us right you have to go uh, for people like us you know it's not another dangerous mm. thing is that we this is our professional uh, hazard if i can uh say that uh, right. if i can put it like that because our audio our video is out there for the fraudsters to copy easily one more thing when i gave my voice sample i gave only a sample of 90 seconds that is the maximum uh, uh time limit if there is a smaller uh, voice sample also fraudsters can use that it can be as as small as a 10 second uh, voice sample as well archana so dangerous things absolutely dangerous absolutely and very important piece of information that you're sharing with us so we are also joined by uh, cyber security expert uh, ankur puranik and information technology consultant rusbe raja on the broadcast uh, uh, rusbe raja is a visiting professor of law at mumbai university thank you so much gentlemen for joining us uh, on this broadcast and making time as you saw this report uh, that uh, santhya gora reported and uh, she actually put the spotlight on the the dangerous abuse of artificial intelligence uh, for the benefit of our viewers uh, if mr purani we could uh, start with you first uh, you know we know the information is readily available our voice sam samples are readily available it is these samples that uh, the scamsters are using uh, to actually dupe people innocent people for the viewers who are watching us right now what would be your piece of advice 
Uh, yeah, so you saw how the entire process was, it was very simple and anyone can do it. Now, of, of course, we did it only for demo purposes, but, uh, uh, you know, we tend to put on a lot of content on social media, which is public and it is easily uh, available to the cyber criminals, uh, you know, and they can extract this audio clip, what we recorded with Santia for uh, around 90 seconds. So this is easily extractable from these videos and that is exactly how they try to clone the voice and uh, the more the uh, bigger the audio clip the more accuracy towards the voice so uh, you know we normally take flights and we put status on facebook and social media i'm flying to so and so place we are giving free information to the cyber criminals that my phone is going to be switched off for the next one hour or two hours or if it's an international trip maybe for four or ten hours and this is the exact thing what these cyber criminals take advantage of. They know your phone is going to be switched off. Even if your family members or friends are going to call you, you're not going to be reachable. And this is exactly uh, what they do. And they know uh, when to do this. So, you know, we should try to restrict uh, putting this information on social media. I know it feels good to tell people I'm traveling abroad or whatsoever, but you're putting yourself at a big risk. Secondly, uh, always uh, educate your family about such things that if at all there is such call uh, received from my end, you can have a code word which you know only you and your family members know about. So this code word can be exchanged uh, to you know really make sure whether it is you or somebody else. And uh, uh, you know even we put this uh, long clips of social media where our voice uh, is very clear and you know so a lot of these things are there uh, which can uh, uh, even through a call now, if I want to take your voice, I'll just uh, make an audio call to you, whether it be a wrong number or whatsoever. I'll just engage you in some conversation like I had sent you this parcel and did you receive the parcel? And, you know, that much clip is also enough for me to extract uh, the audio. So, you know, resources are many. It's about how we protect ourselves. So it is about you and your family getting educated about this. Everyone being educated about how this uh, cloning works, voice cloning works and making them aware and to have some protective means uh, wherein you exchange some kind of uh, code word before uh, any transaction is processed or anything such is processed. Right, and these are some of the observations which we also made. We, we realized how easy it was. Uh, Mr. Raja, I would like to come to you. Uh, you uh, expertise in, uh, your expertise is legal aspect of cyber crime. So when you deal with the victims of cyber fraud, how many cases... I'm just looking for an average figure. Uh, how many cases of voice cloning do you come across? Um, right now, it's very rampant. And out of about 10 cases related to phishing and cyber fraud, uh, recently there have been at least 50% cases which were related to some sort of voice element in them. Whether it was gaining confidence by impersonating a voice or changing the tone of voice, or pretending to be some very important person or pretending to be the CEO of some company. So about 40 to 50% of newer cases relate to uh, voice samples and voice element uh, in the fraud. Right. Also, uh, speaking of legal remedies, I actually want to talk to you about that. Uh, a lot has been said, written, covered about cyber fraud. But as far as legal remedies are concerned, what exactly can be done in order to first make the reporting uh, pr uh, process easier for victims and then securing a conviction if we get to make arrests? Mr. Raja. Right. So there are two aspects of uh, reporting and taking any legal action. One is filing a police complaint. That is the criminal aspect. And the other is the actual recovery of money. If any money has been lost or if any damage has been done, any monetary compensation is required. So that falls under the civil aspect of uh, uh, the Information Technology Act. The Information Technology Act covers both these aspects, but people don't know that uh, the police and the investigating agencies will only help them to punish the criminals or the offenders. They won't really help to get back the money unless that person voluntarily gives the money. For getting back your money, there is a separate procedure for claiming compensation and damages. That is under the civil aspect. That is uh, under Section 43 and the civil contraventions of the Information Technology Act. 
Right. Uh, Mr. Ankur Puranik, uh, if I may come to you for the next question. Uh, have you observed a pattern here? Uh, who do you think are the most vulnerable targets as far as these kind of scams are concerned? Because, you know, imagine if you're getting a call from your loved one and if, you know, it's a, it's a, there's a sense of panic in their voice or they're asking for immediate help, uh, it's, it's, it's very obvious for anyone to fall prey to that. But have you observed a pattern? Is, I mean, because you've seen in uh, scams like FedEx scam that women were targets or uh, senior citizens uh, were the most vulnerable. Or in this case, who do you think are the targets? Uh, so yeah, so um, they they observe you. They observe the social media, and uh, you know they know exactly uh, you know what kind of. Uh, uh, people uh, sit with you, who, whom you interact with, what is your... Because they don't want to end up, uh, uh, you know, uh, entering into a call or a conversation where they are not well-to-do financially. So somebody, uh, you know, who can come under that emotional pressure. So right now we did a very smooth call, whatever we did, uh, the demo. But uh, uh, when it's an actual call, they try to put that stress in the voice. And, you know, so at that time, you know, all your uh, logical brain shuts down, basically. When your logical brain shuts down, uh, any person, so it can be you, it can be me, uh, you know, your logical brain is put to shut. So this is uh, the psychological aspect of it, which I'm not uh, too good at. But yeah, I know how it works. So I know uh, about uh, what psychological games they play. So they try to put this part, logical part of your brain to uh, shut. And, and then you or your family members tend to agree and accept to any terms and conditions. And... Uh, they make your sound uh, or your voice uh, sound uh, like you're in distress, you're in an emergency. So at mm -hmm. that time, you know, you don't think about anything, whether I should do or not do. So, uh, of course, they do okay. target uh, uh, their victims who are from a little well-to-do families, who are being observed, college students. Uh, these are the, the young generation uh, or the old okay. people who are there, you know, who can right. uh, fall to this prey because they are not educated about uh, all these things, you know. So grandfathers, yes. grandmothers are uh, more uh, made victims of this. Absolutely. A very important piece of advisory coming in from uh, Ankur Puranik there. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, speaking to us and uh, sharing uh, this uh, crucial piece of advice with our viewers uh, because we have been covering extensively the kind of impact these uh, cyber cyber scams have on people. Uh, Santa has also been uh, comprehensively covering this. Uh, Santa, what next do we have on the broadcast? So, Ashna, it's time for a short break. On the other side, we get our viewers the report on how scammers are tricking people in the name of fake government schemes using fake apps. Welcome back uh, to... Welcome back to CyberCon. Uh, Cybercrime cases are surging across India and scamsters are becoming more and more tech-savvy and sophisticated as they prey on the unwitting, vulnerable victims. In our ongoing series, CyberCon, CNBC TV 18 Cybercrime Tracker, Shivani Bazaz reports that even government welfare schemes are not being spared when it comes to defrauding the public. Take a look. Over the last few years, the government has launched a flurry of welfare schemes to uplift various sections of the society. But even these are not sacrosanct where fraudsters and online confidence tricksters are concerned. The latest fraud doing the rounds involves one of government's major schemes, the PM Kisan Yojana. The Tamil Nadu police raised the alarm when it came across incidents where a malicious app named PM Kisan Yojana was distributed via channels like WhatsApp and used to defraud victims who downloaded the app thinking they would benefit from government schemes. In Hyderabad, for instance, a private employee recently lost nearly 1 lakh rupees after downloading a malicious file embedded in a fake PM Kisan Yojana app. Here's what happens. Fraudsters create fake apps disguised as trusted government schemes. These are distributed via WhatsApp and other channels, including social media. Once downloaded, the app requires the user to register using sensitive details like Aadhaar, PAN, date of birth and bank credentials. Meanwhile, the app is embedded with malicious code that gives the app's creators control over users' phone, including SMS permissions. This allows the con artist to intercept SMS traffic, on which banks send OTPs to authorize transactions and manipulate UPI platforms to conduct unauthorized transactions. 
Experts say it's time the government acted, especially because such frauds put the reputation of government and its schemes at risk. A lot of these things happen in groups that you're part of. You would get some link which will be in some form of that either you can participate in something and you'll win something um, or there is some another scheme that you're signing up for or there is some government benefit that you are you can avail and because of that you know somebody clicks on it and without any verification recently in the United Kingdom a new regulation was unveiled where if you are a vict victim of some form of payment fraud um, up to a certain amount you will be made good now that is the legislation that is being enabled uh, and the platforms where uh, this fraud is either originating or terminating at they will have to participate in making uh, you know the victim good on on the losses police say these scams have caused significant financial and emotional distress with many victims unaware until their bank accounts are drained they add that following the money once it leaves the bank account is proving to be a challenge since the funds are often routed through multiple UPI apps and in some cases even sent offshore. But regulations alone are not enough. Awareness and preventive action by users also have a part to play in safeguarding against such frauds. This includes double-checking that the only official apps and government portals are used to access government schemes. Government websites usually end with a .in and not .com or .net. The name of the publisher or the developer of the app should be verified on the App Store before download. Experts also advise people to log on to cybercrime portal that cybercrime.gov.in or call 1930 as soon as they realize that they have been scammed. They also say that any request for personal data, debit or credit card pins or OTPs should immediately set off red flags and be reported. They also urge that online transactions only be carried out through verified secure portals and no sensitive information or document be uploaded to unknown and untrusted portals. Other advice includes don't answer video calls from unknown numbers and don't fall for attractive offers because if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. In New Delhi, Shivani Bizas. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That is one thing we have been saying again and again on CNBC TV 18. We started the special series last year. This is the second edition and the motive here is to spread awareness. First and foremost, if possible, do not share your information on social media. Do not put out your number. Do not put out your plans. Do not mention that you are taking a flight, where you are going, uh, when you will be unavailable. These are personal details. So limit what are you going to put on social media. And if you think you, are, you, you got scammed, please call 1930. Stay aware, stay safe. That's important. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of CyberCon. More news and updates on the other side.